Are we recording the calendar? You are asking this. Yes, we are. DMN. Uh, how how sh- how we should address them? Yeah, Who's we? That. Me and her. <laughs> she would have asked. <laughs> She's very clear on how to address him. <laughs> Me and her. I would like to know. Well. Oh, what do, what do you think you should address him as? Sir. There you go. Address him as what? Sir. Yeah. What do you feel is appropriate? Uh, Prophet Sovi. No, a lot of people call me that. Prophet Sovi? Yeah. What's the difference between a prophet and a pastor and a bishop? That's a, that's a very good place to start, by the way. Do you want, which version do you want? You want the, the simplest. The, or the simplest? Yeah. The LeBron James version. Not really much. There's, I don't think there's a difference. I think the only difference is with prophets, you know, there's the whole concept of actually being able to see. And pastors don't? Not really. Why? You say no, they do, but that's not their function. The primary function of a prophet is to see. See what? In the spirit. So what do pastors and bishops do? Mainly, you, you, you find them just preaching? Yeah, I mean, there's different callings. There's evangelists, yeah, there's pastors. There's 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 what, is, what, is, what, what is Bruce? Uh, Bruce the rep, uh, reverend. Bruce at Mount Zion Church? Yes. Brism CD? Yeah, he's yeah. a reverend. He's a reverend. He's a rev. So yeah. he doesn't see in the spirit. No. Like, each one of them has a different ah, calling. Now you're, you're putting words in people's mouths. I'm trying to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who that? I should give most of my money to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will guarantee you, prophets, see, I can only speak for prophets. I can't speak for the others. Uh, yeah. Isaiah, yeah. welcome to That's That Podcast. Thank you. I don't know if you've heard of our podcast before. Um... Yeah, of course, of course. That is Elson. I'm Elson. Mm-hmm. Okay. We My name have is... been speaking. I think we spoke yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yesterday. spoke again today. Yeah. I'm Kalenga. I, Kalenga. Go by, I go by K+. It's K+, okay. plus, baby. That's Tassiana. And you are? Tassiana. What, what are you doing here? <laughs> Elson, do you mind doing the introductions here? <sighs> so you were asking him how to address... Yeah. How do I, so I don't know how I should introduce you. So I've known Tassiana for... How long have I known you? About three years. And she's got a very interesting outlook on life mm-hmm. and religion. In that, you, you can explain your take on religion. Okay, I'm a secular humanist. Okay. I don't believe in the supernatural. Okay. And I also think a lot of you people are frauds. So you don't believe in God? I don't believe in the supernatural. God is supernatural. Don't believe by, in ghosts. By the definition of... Religion, God is supernatural. So you're an so. atheist, pretty yes, much. Yes, to an pretty extent. <laughs> but but so, so when you're an atheist, believer. you also believe in yeah. something. You're a believer. You're a believer in something. I believe in what? Please explain. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 yeah, you, you believe, believe that God doesn't exist. I don't believe God doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one who asserted the idea of a God. So I can't believe in something that doesn't exist. That doesn't make any sense. You said there's a God. Prove there's a God before I can... I can but believe can in that prove idea. The non-existence. You are the one who made the claim. Mm-hmm. The burden of proof is on you. He, who, on you. Are all up, all he up. who alleges <laughs> must prove. What, what, Let me bring exactly? you. what are you doing? <laughs> can you calm down? No, no, no. All I'm saying is she walk? has alleged that mm-hmm. God doesn't exist. She, she can so, articulate herself. Yes. Kalinga. And my I question to her no, is uh-huh. Can you can you let her talk? <laughs> can you go ahead, Tasiana? <laughs> I haven't oh, alleged. Have here. I haven't yeah. alleged God ha- doesn't exist. Uh-huh. Uh, you people asserted that God exists. You are the ones that said, "Oh, okay, this is a miracle. It must be God, right?" Mm. So therefore, you have the burden of proof. You have. To so the burden prove, is on us now to yes, prove to prove that God that there's exists. There's a God. Yes. So what do you believe in? Evolution. 
Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution. You, you can't believe in facts. That doesn't make any sense. Evolution doesn't make sense to you as well. It's a fact. Evolution is a fact. Yes. Wow. So in her, it, well, what she's trying to say yeah. is, it doesn't need. She doesn't have to believe it because it's fact. There we go. Yeah. Ish, man. I've always, I've always got a problem with people believing evolution, eh? Because it's just... Nobody I told you the other time when we evolution. had uh, Sri Lanji. Yeah. I also be, so I'm on the fence. I'm a Christian, <laughs> but I believe in evolution too. I don't. Which, which kind of like contradicts. In what sense? Because you can't be a Christian and believe in evolution. Either yeah. you believe in the Big Bang... Or you believe that we evolved. There was a creator. Right. That was yeah. the right. Okay. I get, I get what you mean. I'm a firm believer that there's a God and he created everything around us. How do you explain evolution with the Big Bang and somehow everything just decides to fall in place and human beings start coming out mm-hmm. of the water and we evolve into where we are today? It doesn't make sense to me. Man, this theory of evolution, there has to be a creator somewhere. Well, so she, she has to explain to us how yeah. that thing works. Oh, what, she's a scientist, oh, actually. Yes, she's a scientist. She and is. Okay. Very so, brainy, this it's one. scientists who are actually saying there must be a God. Because how do you explain... Mm-hmm. Um, Which scientist? Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson is one of the first to actually come Neil out. And Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. Tyson. Yes. Hold on. Let me, let, me, let me explain what his logic was. Neil deGrasse Tyson comes on the, the Joe Rogan podcast and he says, you know what? There actually must be a God. Because how do you explain... How, let's just start with celestial bodies, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How do you explain if there is even a 1% increment in gravitational pull Mm -hmm. in space, all the planets will pull together and make one big ball. If there's 1% more or less gravitation, all the planets will scatter Scatter. into the universe and there'll be no universe to talk about. Okay. So there has to be a creator who balanced things and made sure everything was in the order that it is today. I think you need more faith to believe God doesn't exist. Please explain it to me. I'm curious. Because, um, you know, just with what he has explained, you know, probability of that being being left to chance, you yeah. know, is just, it's, it's mind-blowing. Can you stop fidgeting with your mic? The, 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 you know, if just on the mathematical scale, it's, if you look at it, it really requires a lot of faith to believe God doesn't exist. In my opinion. Okay, so I'm curious. Mm. What exactly is, if you look at it, mm-hmm. you require more faith? Because the assertion that if there's 1% gravitational pull mm-hmm. can be... Dis- if it's more, all the planets will bundle okay. together. If I'm it's not, less, they'll scatter. So, so, I'm not, so, so I'm not what an that astronaut. implies is, in, my, in, my, in my, my point of view, is that that implies that there is a cause and there is intelligent design you get it? There's an intention. For what exactly? Because if you're looking at just how intricate everything is, you know, how everything just comes together, you know, the the scale at which these things are, like he mentioned, there has to be. Okay, so let's, there let's, has to be somebody behind the, someone actually behind this whole thing. Let's make it very simple. Just give me one thing that you think is of intelligent design. Just one thing can be a cat, can be a dog, can be a human being. And by saying intelligent design, you must be assuming that the creation is perfect. So if I, if I put eggs, flour, water, and I leave them in the kitchen, after, let's say, maybe two million years, do you think I'll find a cake? That's called a watchmaker's fallacy. That's, that's called a what? A watchmaker's fallacy. What's that? You know that a watch works because there's someone who designed a watch. Mm-hmm. It's a mechanical design. That's not biological. But that's what you're implying. We, no, that's not what I'm implying. Yeah, if you say um, matter just came up and formed something that has a function, like the human body. The fact that it's still forming and it's still happening right now is much more evidence that creation... Forming in what sense? That the universe is still expanding and growing. It what hasn't do, what stopped do you mean since. It's, it's forming. It's still creating more and more planets have of indiscussion. Discuss- have you checked the scientific, re- I mean, scientific findings, the recent ones? The universe is not expanding. The universe is not growing? No, it's not. How do you know that? Do you know the outreach of the universe? No. According to science <laughs> and according to some recent studies, you will find that they actually, use, because these guys are finding, you know, they, they're finding out things every day. Mm-hmm. So in the research, <laughs> one of the research um, articles, if you actually see 
um, some of the findings that are up there right now is they have discovered that it's not actually expanding. Mm -hmm. And they actually, if you look at the whole uh, concept of the universe expanding, it's not really expanding to somewhere, all right? It's not as straightforward as you're putting it. I'm not putting it straight. You, you want to hold the mic? I'm not. I'm not putting it straight you don't forward. Like so maybe, maybe if you mouth. explain, <laughs> if you explain. Okay, so let's go back first to the question of intelligent design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to say that human beings are an intelligent design. Right. The easiest thing I can give you is that we have molars today that have no use whatsoever. Mm -hmm. In fact, the scientists will tell you that it's better to have it removed because it causes problems as they grow. So if a creator is very smart and has the ability to make a formula that creates the perfect human being, why would such a small thing as a molar exist? That can critically damage someone's skull. You also have the idea that our bodies have been having cancer since the, the discovery of it. How do you explain that for intelligent design? We also have an ecosystem. I think you're contradicting yourself. How am I contradicting Evolution, myself? Evolution, one of the um, fundamental or uh, primary, if, if you look at the claims of evolution, you see, the whole concept of evolution is that you evolve mm -hmm. to adapt to whatever environment, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So if you are saying, we don't need these molars now, mm -hmm. are you saying in, let's say maybe a million years, do you think we'll still have molars? The speculation is they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be there? Yes. Okay. So what's, what's, what's the sense behind that? What do you mean, what's the sense? We evolved from some, first You are foremost, disqualifying intelligent design yes. by saying, because we don't need molars now, mm -hmm. that's a flaw. Yes. In the theory of intelligent design. Yes. But if what you are claiming is correct, intelligent design actually proves that over time, if you don't need something, Evolution actually proves intelligent design. Explain that to me because that doesn't the designer sense. put in a mechanism for uh, a certain species or whatever, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you say a, hu a human being to adapt to their environment. Yeah. So the body stops producing them over time. So are you saying that the designer is playing chess with us? No. So he says, okay, let me just play today. Let me give them molars no, no, and no. let it hurt very remember, badly. Remember, then after a few remember years, remember how do molars hurt? <laughs> Your wisdom too. Yeah, but how? There's I'm what's sorry. there's what's known as impaction. They, they get impacted. Have you, have you heard of so that? So they come. And I've never know. had that pain before, so oh, yeah, I wouldn't quite. A know. lot of I had I had one. Okay, listen to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. the only pain but, you heard you had is herpes, huh? <laughs> it's got herpes. You know what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's talk about you. You're talking about intelligent design and. Mm -hmm. You, you're a firm believer in evolution, right? I'm not a How believer. Do you, Don't say believer. It's a fact. No, but you know. Okay, you no, no. You say, believe you in the theory say. of evolution. Okay, can you tell us? Can you tell us what species that has that has evolved in recent time? Doesn't matter. Us. From what? Lactose intolerance. What have we evolved from? We used to be lactose intolerant. A lot uh -huh. of us that used to be. That we are adapting to our environment. But then adaption. Yeah, you you know what? Here, here's the thing. You people cannot now jump on a bad wagon that you said doesn't exist. Remember your your, your position no, 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 has. No no no. no, no, no. He started by no. saying. Please allow me to finish. Okay. So you. She's got memory. She said, please. Yeah, I only, well, I only did that because she said, If you did say, please, you, you know, we're going to have a different story here. <laughs> Look. For the longest time, people have said, in fact, in the beginning, good, yeah. if you right? say people, yeah, yeah no, in people. the beginning, God created, created the heaven and the yeah. earth, mm -hmm. right? Then God said, let us, let us create them like us, mm -hmm. man and woman, right? Mm -hmm. So in this analogy, the idea is that what was created was a homo sapien, modern mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. right? So from your own ideals, yeah. right? It means had God created the perfect creature, they should not have problems as simple as an impaction. We shouldn't be having that problem now. Unless if you're telling me that celestial bodies have impactions because we're, we're created in his image. I think your, your analysis is flawed. Okay, please enlighten okay. me. From a biblical point of view, 
the Bible does not entirely, um, you know, what's the word? Okay, we'll come back to some question. What's the word? <laughs> well, Which you, word? You, know, you can say it in uh, uh, Vernac. No, uh, the thing is, I don't even know how to say it in Vernac. But anyway, from a biblical point of view, the Bible doesn't oppose evolution or some um, aspects of evolution. Mm-hmm. Okay? As a matter of fact, majority of scientists who came up, in fact, Charles Darwin. Yes. And the theory of evolution. And the theory of evolution are derived from the Bible. Very inaccurate, actually. I have read the theory of ev- of evolution, the book by Charles Darwin. It was actually me. majorly opposed by the church when he first. No, no, no. Opposition of the church Wait. does not mean he did not get his ideas from the church. How? <laughs> I've got questions so, for. So I have read this man's research. Yeah, I have also work. read this man's mm-hmm. book, mm-hmm. and the the gist of it is. He was told that he's going on a botanical event, mm-hmm. right, with the church. And he f- went on these islands and discovered a lot of differences between the animals based, the birds, based on which island they, they live on. Mm-hmm. And based off that, he found that that was an adaptation. In fact, the beak was the biggest part. Do you also part. know he ate them? I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> you also know that he, but, he, I he uh, promoted, uh, what is this, um, inbreeding, you know? Mm. Like... Family. Anyway, anyway, I'm, continue. I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not, I'm not going to no, sit no, here. No, no, yeah. I'm not going to, to sit here and say that on. separate the man from his work, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. But then Darwin's work has been verified by scientists that are credible, right? So there is no belief in evil in the theory of evolution. It is a fact. It happened. There's enough proof to say that this happened. You observed it. Do I need to Did observe it? Did you have time it? to observe it? I didn't observe the... the, the so that, I didn't, that I defeats didn't, the scientific process. No, no, no. I didn't science. Ob- so does that mean that because I didn't observe Jesus rising from the dead, it didn't happen? But there is proof of Jesus. Oh, please. Being, Can I have? The story has been handed down from generation to generation. Not just the story. And there's historical <laughs> records. The and the places that are there... You can go to that place. You can visit the place. So it's the, a physical place. Yeah. But then you Proof didn't. Is there. No, no, you didn't see it. That's your counter to me. No, no, no. You said I, I didn't have did, to see you, it. You know, you listen. I didn't have to see okay. it. Eyewitnesses saw it. Wrote you it. Didn't see and the evolution. The records are there. No, but then evolution is constantly happening. I just give you an example. But did you, uh, did you no, observe no, it? No, no. But then, so because the scientific process no, no. demands that scientific you observe, process you about reproducibility. Not about observing. No, no, It's no, about no. reproducibility. What's the scientific, what's the scientific you process? You do it. You did it. This was the result. He does it. The result is the same. I do it. The result is the same. That is the scientific Experimentation. process. Experimentation. Yes. And I just that's answered just that one, we are. No. That's just one, what's the other one, one? part of the process. What's the other Experimentation, one? Experimentation. Observation. Mm-hmm. Okay. You are the scientist. No, but then here's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, here's what? <laughs> No, she's the scientist. No, you can't dispute something. Oh, you were not there. Then it didn't happen. I didn't right? say that. I asked if you observed it. I, of, how can I observe something that happens over millennia? No exactly one was here. my point. But that doesn't refute the um, fact that it happened. But that's lack There's of... There's a lot of evidence that supports... So is your argument going to be, we didn't observe the Big Bang, so it didn't happen? That's despite, not the point. Despite the fact that there is still evidence... From That's the not Big Bang, that it happened. That's not the point. What's the point? What's the evidence? We still okay. have. We I, I, like, just, yeah, I like how you are bringing up, you know, all this scientific evidence, and you know, scientists have said this and scientists have said that. But it's the one thing, and and I like you have a lot have had a lot of questions about, you know, uh, Christianity, what the Bible says, yeah. and what scientists say. But it's one thing that scientists can't really explain, and you're in, you're a scientist in one way. Right. Not an expert. Not an expert, yes, but you are a scientist in a way. And if there's one thing that they can't really explain how it works, and they, they've been debating whether they're, they're actually, you know, using that as something that's convincing that there should be a God. How do you explain the human subconscious and how it works? You as a scientist understand the placebo effect better than anybody in this room. I can give you a cube of sugar and it can cure your malaria. Why? Because of you manipulating your subconscious mind and it would tune the body into believing what it's supposed to believe at that particular point. You know what I mean? The subconscious mind does so, it knows everything about your body. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know that. Yeah. How do you explain or where does subconscious mind fit in the theory of evolution? Where does it come in if not created by a God? 
You think the subconscious mind is created by God? It has to be. There's no scientific explanation. It's the scientists themselves who are saying they so, can't explain how it came in. Remember in the theory when, of evolution. Rem- remember when I said that it's not the the job of the scientists to prove a god? It's a scientist saying no, there no, must no. be a god because you can't explain it's how or not. when the con- subconscious mind entered the human mind. Okay, so when you say it's the scientist, I would like a name. Don't just throw it out there. Plenty scientists is podcast I listen to the stuff you should know. I'll, I'll give you an episode you go listen to that. Joe Rogan, many scientists come to you and they fail to explain how the subconscious mind entered the human mind so in the theory the, of evolution. The best, the best answer to that is yeah. we still don't know. And for a scientist, ah. for a scientist, but, but do you think it's only do you okay. think it's only unique to humans? The subconscious mind? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Why do you think that? <sighs> Because uh, most most well I'm not a scientist, but what 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 I how, think how many other animals have souls? Other in animals respond to Chimps. the environment. No, they don't. How do you prove a soul? Yeah, that's another yeah, question. Exactly. It's a soul. Yeah. It's Because a soul. you have octopus that are smarter or on par with humans. Orangutans, which is what beings. we are extremely close to in terms of relation. Yeah, but they they have uh, intelligence of a five year old. So again, to intelligence, to intelli- intelligence or the intellect is something it is totally different. It's relative. It's relative. It's relative. Yeah. Intelli- yeah. Intellect and um, uh, okay, so the, the s- smart and intellect; those are two different things. Or right, so you, you yeah, just so if like, you say someone, you're going to intend yourself in the web here. No, no, no. You're doing extremely well. I don't think it's semantics, it's just, semantics. Yeah, it's semantics. I don't think yeah. it's a rabbit hole that you want to go down. But you've been doing extremely well so far. Smart and just, d- intelligent. <laughs> so, so that one you might put apart. There's different there's a difference there's a big difference between someone know, who's smart and intelligent. Yeah. You see? So yeah, we can talk about I mean we can debate about the intelligence of. We haven't really gotten into who you are all these things. Speaking into of who you are. Yeah. Guys, yes. Sovi. I know the Sovis. Oh, you know? Your dad is the first born in the Sovi family, right? Yes, he is. Yeah. Brian Sovi, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So so, so who are you? Um were you born your family? Well, I'm just a guy who was born in Kitwe. And you're the first born in your and family. I'm the first well. born in my family. We we actually four. Yeah. So it's me and then my two sisters and the brother. Well, my brother is the third. Are they born. single? And then your two sisters? Yeah, they're single. Yeah. I can speak for them. Light skinned? Yeah. <laughs> But why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> What kind of question is that? I'm getting to know the man. <laughs> and his sisters. <laughs> Yeah, well, they they are, well, I, I, they haven't said anything to me about being a big one. Okay. So, anyways, there's no relationship of theirs, you know, that you've blessed. No, no, I haven't blessed any yet. Right. Okay. So, there's, if there's anyone out there, I don't know you. Oh, you're sitting right next to him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, I like to know what that offering and tithing plate looks like. <laughs> it's anyway. basically just the four of us. Of course, I'm the firstborn, and yeah, it's a small family. Your uncle, Paul Sovi. Yes. I first heard of you from him years back and he said okay. there's a nephew of mine you need to meet. This mm-hmm. guy looked at me one day, he said something about my life and it came to pass. Mm-hmm. At what point does this and he he's always told me that I should meet you one day to come to Zambia. So I also mentioned this morning that you were in. I, uh-huh. I got excited because wow. I never told you this. I want to yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. I want to tap into that that which your uncle Paul mm-hmm. got from you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you looked at him and he said stuff about his life. What do you see about In Austin, in the dice life. Oh, no, leave me out of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Leave what, me out of this. What, what do you see in his life? No, leave me out of this. If I were to know, I would have asked him. <laughs> no, like, really, what, what do you see in his life? She wants to ask something. She wants to see how you see these things. <laughs> She wants to know. No, I'm curious. How, how did you know that you can see? Yeah, where did that come from? Where did the call you know, when, I, when did you discover the call? I, I, I had a, a mirror. I had a vision. Yeah. I had a vision when I was seven. You know, it. I think that's where it started from. Oh, so vision. I've always been. I've, I've always been spiritual in a way. Do you remember what the you vision know, I, was? I, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I saw this figure who I believe was the Lord Jesus, and he's he told me what I was supposed to do. And what we're supposed to do. Um, you know, without getting into much details, basically he was saying that he had called me to preach the gospel. Right. Yeah. How did how did that word reach you? Like, was it? No, it's like an really audible understand. voice. Tasiana, stop smirking. I'm not smirking. I'm listening to him and I'm listening to his questions. 
Wait, w- your mic. How did how did the voice <laughs> reach you? Like, was it an audible voice? Was yeah. it a vision? I can't really, I can't really was it a writing on a wall in a dream? I can't really explain it. You know, yeah. is vision is different. You know, right. I I could see I could see the image, and I could hear the voice, but at the same time. When he was speaking, he was actually showing me, you know, I've been to so many countries and, right. and most times when I arrive, you know, at the airport, it's like he actually gave me a preview of everything. Mm. So there are times I actually get those, you know, kind of like what you call deja vu. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I trace it back to that time. I don't remember a lot of things when I was seven, but I actually, you know, six, seven, but I remember that event. Do you, you know, remember the words which were spoken to you? I remember the words, you know, the words spoken to me. What were the words? What was the, well, well, before the words, what was the image? So you saw an image. Was it like a bright light? Just, just light. Did just, just like, light. Like blonde flowing? Uh, I, I couldn't <laughs> see the face. I couldn't see the face. I could not see any face. White robe? Could I, couldn't, see, I couldn't tell if it's a robe or anything. It was just, just like white light. White light, like an image. You know, I couldn't even tell if it was like a defined figure. But, you know, because you know, of how we perceive things. Of mm. course, you need to understand when you see a vision, it also comes down to your perception of how you see certain things, right. okay? So um, God uses your faculties as well. So you, I, I saw that, and for me, I could just explain it as a light or a figure or mm. something. And then, of course, he told me about what he wanted me to do, and then that, that was it. What, what what were the words? I'm really curious about the words. Like no, what, no, those words are personal to me. Yeah, they're personal. He said that I'm not going to divulge. Let me yeah. t- let me tell you a very crazy story. I don't know if I told you this. Mm-hmm. Like years ago, about <clears throat> five years ago, I was I was dating a girl coincidentally from Eswatini. Mm-hmm. She had a very amazing job, and about six months into our relationship, she would dream about a person. Mm-hmm. A very specific dream. Mm. Now that person was not necessarily a person that was their friend, mm-hmm. but it's a person they had access to. For example, I know Kalenga, mm-hmm. and Kalenga most likely knows Coin. Say, say I don't have a relationship with Coin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But through you, I can get to Coin. So I would have a dream about Coin. Mm-hmm. So Coin is Kalenga's friend. Okay, um, yeah. just for context. Mm-hmm. So what would begin to happen is when she has this dream. If she does not tell the person about the dream, she would get physically ill. Like she would not be able to get out of bed. Mm. And it would get worse and worse every single day. So from the first day that she has the dream, every day that passes that she doesn't tell the person, she would get get physically ill Mm. up until she tells the person this. So she left Zambia. She was was, was from Eswatini. She left Mm. Zambia. She got reassigned. Then she went to Eswatini. So the paths are sort of different to the one that you took because when she went there, she then realized that her calling was to be a sangoma. Sangoma, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's some you. serious plot twist, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, so <laughs> Africa, <laughs> it's, Ratini, no. it's a normal thing. It's a normal thing. Serious? Yeah. She's as light skinned. She's as light skinned as her. Are they all light skinned in, Sw- in a Swatini? No, it's like not, color, not everyone. Not everyone. No. no. Well, coincidentally, everyone I meet from there. Because even the time, remember Maybe, I told I you the wedding that was in... Um, in comparison to Zambia, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember the wedding I told you about where the queen and yeah, uh, yeah. the thing, the, the royal family came from Eswatini to the mm, we- my, my brother-in-law's mm, wedding. Mm-hmm. All of them were light-skinned. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm under this impression there. Yeah, lighter than yeah, yeah, Zambians, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they are what Zambian women aspire to be. Oh, wow. Here's the lotion. You did not say that. <laughs> You did not drop that. Okay, those who use lightning creams. Yeah, well, except us, yeah. Now. Uh, yeah, no, she's she's black and proud. Like yeah, she's got like speedometers, redness tattoos on her. Um, yeah, oh, tattoos all over. So yes, um, we we're talking about your calling. You were seven years old. Um, yeah, six, seven. Yeah, is when this whole journey started. Mm-hmm. So what did you did you tap into it? Did you ignore it? Did you actively try to pursue it? Well, no, I'm not, 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 not really at that age, you know. I, mm. I, I think the advantage was I was born in a Christian home. Yeah. So, um, obviously, we would go to church and, um, you know, I would do uh, memory verses and stuff like that in church. And, I mean, you know, people just kind of, you know, associated me with just being a pastor, a young pastor or something like that. Mm. But it's not something I was pursuing like, okay, I'm going to be this, you know, that, that wasn't the, the, the goal, but I was, I was, 
at actively what, involved. At what point in do church. you realize that you know you you've got you've got a calling and you can see things, you can see into the future, you can see into you know people's lives and tell them about their lives? Because the things Paul told me about you were mm-hmm. quite profound, man. Like, at what point yeah. do you start realizing that what you see is actually going to happen in people's lives? Yeah. So you know, I I I, I believe God spoke to me when I was about nine. Nine, ten years, ten years old. I. Oh that, yeah, that's she's, her. She's yeah, just, just pass the phone. She's light skin. So that was her initiation. <laughs> oh, so she's a single man right now. She's a single man, and she's actually moved back to Lusaka now. Oh wow! So mm-hmm. she she texted me like two weeks ago saying, "Hey, can you help me find a house?" <laughs> <laughs> and you was red. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> anyway, you were talking about when you start seeing. Yeah, so I I I I got into a, a fast. You know, I think people were, thought I was crazy to do it because that I was young and all those things. At the age of nine, I got into a forty day fast. So I was doing forty days. So what sort of a fast was this? Like you don't just eat during the day, eat at night, or yeah. So I'd have like one meal at night. Mm. Yeah, but the light meal for forty days. Yeah, for forty days. It wasn't like a Jesus fast. No, no human can do Jesus, that. Jesus, you don't eat at all, right? No. So I wouldn't do food and drink or anything during the day. During the day, no, only eat at night. Just one meal. I've actually carried that tradition up to now. So, what was the revelation after the forty days? So, after the forty days, I didn't see anything. Okay. Nothing happened. You were ghosted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Blue ticked. You know, I. I I, I didn't see anything significant or anything, mm. but then a month after, just, I just started seeing things. You know, I would, I would know like what's going to happen, even before it happens. What was the first thing you saw? Yeah, um, I remember ministering to well, not ministering. I spoke to a certain lady in 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 Dollar because we were in Dollar at the time. So this lady had come from Canada. She mm. was Canadian, and I said something to her, and she was just like spooked. She was like, so she, they went and advised my my parents to pull me out of school. You to told her something that was actually happening in her life yes. at that point. So she was so spooked. She was like, "No, there's something special about him. If he continues being in school, he's going to, you know, he's going to lose. The he's going to dilute this. Yeah. yeah, this calling. Yeah. So I I got put out of school How for about a year. I'm not so sure. I think it was maybe Kalinda. That's why you dropped out of school too. Hey, <laughs> similar reason. I thought about this. Similar reason. No, I mean I went back. It was just like a year or something. Or he, or he went back. Yeah, I went back. <laughs> <laughs> you did go back. I didn't go. <laughs> so yeah, I went back. So yeah, I missed the year. So your which is like which year? A Wait. So puzzle. Mm, <laughs> sometimes yeah. Oh okay. Sometimes it's like a puzzle, but sometimes it's clear. So the the one year they took you away from school, mm-hmm. what was happening in that year? Just I was just I was just a normal Chilling. kid. I was just a kid. How old? Were yeah, you? but you're not in school. You're not a normal kid. I was a kid. Was normal a kid. kids were in school. <laughs> so how old was you? I was a kid. I think um, twenty. When was that? Twenty. So I I did the first when I was nine. Mm. Um, by the way, I got baptized the same year. Right, I was baptized. Um, by Pastor Cyrus. He's a pastor of um, Victory Bible Church. Mm-hmm. By the way, you know Dr. Mumba? Yeah, Nevers Mumba. Uh, yeah. Dr. Nevers Mumba. I, yeah. I, I, I started in his church. Oh. Yeah, so all those things I was doing was in Victory. I've never seen a public speaker like that, man. Yeah, he's, Ever. he's excellent. Ha! Yeah, he's excellent. I still have not been answered. <laughs> what was the question? Um, How old were you, fam? Yeah, so I was, I think I was nine, t- 10, 11. Okay. And 11, yeah. Okay. And you would call yourself a normal kid when you were put out of school for yeah, one no, year. Yeah, I was a normal kid. I was, normal I kids had, were in school when you were supposed I, to be. I had friends, you know, we, I was just doing everything. So what was happening in that year? Your friends are at school, in class learning. What was happening to you? I never really had friends, eh? Okay. I never I mean, did, well, yeah. just, I never really. Generally speaking, your classmates were in school. You were yeah. home. What was happening? I actually don't remember that year. It went by so fast. You know, I would, I, I remember seeing my siblings coming back from school and I was just at home. No, my point is, if somebody says, this boy should not go to school, mm-hmm. there must be something happening that's enhancing your calling. So I guess the logic yeah. was, the school system is going to mess him up because he's a special kid. Mm. Why did you go back? That was the case. What is what? 
Why did he go back no, after I insisted a year? To go. I, I insisted. So I it, actually, because the dropping out wasn't his idea. I actually I went so he didn't to, mess him up. I actually went to the school myself. And Dollar Basic. I went there myself. And actually went and spoke to someone. I said, I want to sign up and I want to be. Right. So now you're a grade behind. Yes, I was a grade behind. But <laughs> okay. I don't know. It just worked out. I, 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 was, I was done with school by the time I was 16. Even after yeah, yeah. falling back or a yeah, year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting, man. Yeah. Really interesting. And then, so you get, you get back into school. Mm-hmm. You still have this calling though. Yeah. Does school dilute any of this? You go back and then you I still think, finish your whole. I think to some extent it does. Okay. Um, but I was, I'm an introvert. Well, I was an introvert. I'm not anymore. You are yeah. an extroverted yeah. introvert I'm now. I'm an extroverted introvert because I have to deal with people all the time. Yeah. You see, so I, I, I went back to school. Uh, I don't remember having a friend in school. Um, never had a girlfriend in school. Eh? We had yeah, you had a boring high school, bro. Yeah, it was it was kind of boring, you know. Wait, like high school, you didn't have a girlfriend. Primary and high school. So you were still a virgin even after high school. Oh my God, why do you have to go to? That? You know. But anyway, but, oh, yeah, but yeah, then yeah, again, yeah, you don't need a girlfriend yeah. to have sex. Wait, but yeah, were yeah. you a virgin though? Yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what so would you I, do to the girls who would approach you? I mean, you're a light skinned no, guy. You were very never, attractive for the girls in school. I was sure. the guy. I was the guy people went to yeah. if they wanted girls. Girls. You were the hookup. I was the hookup. The wingman. Yeah. But the virgin. <laughs> so if you were not nice to me, I oh forget. <laughs> this is interesting. Though. You go to the, you go the one guy who's not having sex to hook you up with chicks. <laughs> So that, I mean, but then again, I think it worked out in his favor because then he could see into the future which girl would accept the guy and who wouldn't. So he'd be like, "Don't waste no, your time on this one, brother." It doesn't work like that. It doesn't no. work like that. So you wouldn't I, use your powers in those situations. I think with, I think with the with the high school, yeah. um, junior high school, all the way up to secondary school. Actually, the secondary school. I was in a boys' school. Kids mm. boys. Oh, kids boys. Yeah, yeah. kids boys. So I. That's of course, the, the guys, time people would cross over to Helen Kaunda, which was an like all girls school. I just didn't have the time for that. It was actually when you were at Kuta Boys that I met Paul Sovi and he said, Dude, oh, there's a it? nephew of mine you need to meet. This guy is going to prophesy things. Why you know, did, you, what did he you, saw, want you to meet him? Uh, well, you know, I've known your family my whole life. I had no idea. I've known you your no, whole he's life. I have no idea. I've known but I think your I've dad. Seen, I've your seen br- him somewhere. I, I no, but I've don't answer my question. Your dad's Why young did the uncle want you to meet him? Um, so Paul, mm-hmm. your uncle, yeah, was baffled by something you, you had told him mm-hmm. about his life, and it came to pass. And he says, "Dude, you need to meet my nephew." Uh-uh. It's, you're not answering my question. Can I come to the? Can I come to the? How can you hurry up? <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? Mm-hmm. Be patient, bro. Be patient. Mm-hmm. Why did he want me to meet him? Yeah, I mean, he, he felt with, I lucky. Up with an answer right now. No, 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 no. He felt lucky having someone in his family who can see things. So he felt, and that I think that that's the time I was getting into business. So he felt if I met you, you would actually direct me which way to go because, like, you had you done just, in this uh, life. Ah, no, no, true story. See, no, true story. Oh, Dude, you told him. Could you, no, could no, you no, say excuse me. <laughs> listen, you told him at that particular time. I think he was trying to move from either professional insurance or some other insurance companies working mm-hmm. for. And I think you told him to quit that job and join that company. And he did, and he got promoted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah. No, but that doesn't say why he no. told you that. Dude, Dude was you he just going t- around Dola telling people to meet to meet him? I am close friends with his uncle. It's all his uncles, in fact. His brother comes from a family of ten, right? Mm, mm. Yeah. And the dad is the firstborn, Brian Sovi, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. told you earlier, I know the whole family, bro. Even mm. though we never see at family events, how come? Because I'm always out. I saw you at one funeral. Your grandfather's yeah, this, in yeah, Kitwe. Yeah, that funeral, was it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I saw. Yeah, you just walked past. Okay. And Paul kept saying you should link up with him, and we didn't. Mm-hmm. But we know, the wedding last month, you're not there as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in... This is a very busy man. All right. Where was I? <laughs> it's I his, think it's I was his, in Dubai. I'm it's his sure. uncle's wedding. See, he could have you, shown you, up. Did you hear where he was? Dubai is like six hours away. Yeah, so? You could have flown back. He flies, flies private. Bruh. I was... Yeah, I think I was in Dubai. I'm yeah. not so sure. I seen this, seen this wedding. Oh, Cindy's wedding. Cindy's wedding, wedding last month, yeah. I got the pictures, yeah? Just the photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got them. He's a busy man, all right? He's healing people. <laughs> All right, what, what, what do you do with your time? This is why you're at every I'm single wedding. I'm not healing wedding. people. This is why you're at every I'm single wedding. I'm too much wedding. time. <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. Yes, you have a question? So, 
you I was talking to one of your assistants and mm-hmm. she told me that you have the power to heal people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the leg issue. Yeah. I knew you were going to bring how, up the leg issue. How, how come you guys never go to hospitals? Like what's up with you that? You know we had we we had a service today and mm-hmm. a number of people got healed. No, 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 no. That's that's not my question. I'm I'm coming yeah? to your question. Um you also need to look at what governs the the space or the realm of and how healing works. Okay? There's faith involved. Okay. Do you know that in the time of Jesus, I mean, you, you don't believe in that anyway, but in the time of Jesus, they had hospitals. There's no record of Jesus going to any hospital. He would wait for people to come Because to him. The Bible says they would be brought to him. So and those who were brought to him were healed. Were healed. So children in a cancer wing mm-hmm. on life support mm-hmm. should be brought to you for healing. Yes. On life support. Yeah, they can, they can, oh, they, we can be invited. They can keep me invited. Are you no serious? <laughs> <laughs> if we're invited, so there, if, no if children are the dearest to God, to God, no, they're not the dearest to God. Did he say that? Where did he say that? The children heaven inherited by. No, 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 no. That's that's. that's so they are not the dearest thing. to God. The innocent are not the dearest to God. No, that's that's um that's a whole okay, different so thing. Yeah. You have the chance to like sh- shut up every skeptic on this planet. And all you have to do is walk to a hospital mm-hmm. and heal everyone. And heal the babies, not even the grown-ups, you, you know, they they live their life. So who cares really? <laughs> this one. I do care. I'm just joking. <laughs> But then children, right? Yeah. Because these are innocent. They are, they are born with the horrific diseases and that kind mm-hmm. of thingy. But you won't do it because what is it, is it pride? Like what what's up with that? Why aren't you going to hospitals despite Jesus not going to hospitals, mm-hmm. which I assume has a lot to do with the fact that he wasn't welcome, and probably authority wouldn't have wanted him at the hospitals because mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. But we live in a different time. Yeah, everybody will be happy to see a prophet. Yeah. like yourself at the hospital, mm-hmm. but yet you would not go there because a child. Has to come to, to the church. No, I get. I actually get your logic. So <clears throat> I actually understand. You know where you're coming from, but it just doesn't work like that. Like it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like Faith that. Faith and healing simply don't work like that. That's, that's okay. Not an there's a whole. There's a whole thing. I mean, I can do a whole. We don't have time for me to get into that, but I think the the you know the simplest thing I can say to you is. Um, issues like faith, issues like healing require faith. Okay. Children don't require faith, though, do they? Because this is a child; they have no, they don't have the faculty to understand. Mm-hmm. Tasiana, But, you're going to hell. Tell what me this do you now. mean? I'm going to hell. No, she's 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 raising a good point. Like children don't point. have the ability to believe mm-hmm. in a god and not believe in a god. That's not mm-hmm. probable to them, right? Yeah. So it makes sense from a human point of view. You know, you you. You're applying, um, you, you're understanding it from a human point of view. You get it. But um, if you look at it from a spiritual point of view, it's a, it's a whole different ballgame. So God says, don't heal anyone unless they come to me directly. That's not exactly what I'm trying to say. What <laughs> I'm saying is things like healing require mm-hmm. faith. Prophecy doesn't require faith. I can prophesy to anyone whether they believe or not. But healing requires faith even yes. for a child. Yes. Healing requires faith. <clears throat> But you see how that doesn't So you you will say it's not fair. <clears throat> uh no, I'm 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 an atheist. I know God is beyond fairness. Yeah, he doesn't just, he doesn't he's, it's, it's he's not, not fair. It's not at all. about fairness. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's not how it works. Yeah. But then at least he created these children with diseases. You'd think that he would also be at the forefront of hoping they get cured from those diseases that he allowed to to happen to them. God didn't allow any disease. No cancer, just the devil. The happened. devil. God oh, didn't, he did God that. Didn't allow any, the devil. Any the that. devil did cancer. No, the devil. The devil like <laughs> tempts you. Corruption. The devil. The devil corruption brings like the bad not, ish. God did not bring corruption. Okay, so where did cancer come from? Then I'm curious. From we are created in God's image. From the devil. <laughs> who only does things are allowed by who? By God. Mm. God God allows the devil to to tempt you and do bad things by to you. By giving cancer to your child? Yeah. 
You know, do you know like God actually allows see this this is my very limited knowledge of the Bible. <laughs> God give it, allowed give it. Who, who who did God say you can you can you can take away everything from this dude just what his life job. job. Yeah. Right, see, so permission was granted. <laughs> Yeah, she, well, she answered that question. Yeah, of course. I used bro, to even be the devil knows the Bible, bro. Are you, are you serious? I used to be a Christian. You just oh, don't right. grow up. Even the devil knows the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. No, I just didn't expect. I mean, I thought she was born an atheist. Oh, wow. I was. Yeah. Then I became a Christian. Then I and, then, back, and then back. So back why did here. you leave? Because children are dying in hospitals with cancer. And the pastors are just in church. So you never yell out God when you're having sex? Evolution. Pro evolution. <laughs> We're talking about your life, by the way. Yes. Um, after high school, did you go to st- college? You went to theology school immediately. No, no, no. I never, I never did. I, I actually, actually wanted to, to, to study law. Yeah. You wanted to. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I aspired to be. And what you what, what happened then? He was what? Well, what? I, did, I, did, I, did, I did study Is she fidgeting long? with the microphone? It's a little too much noise. Tatiana, do you want to stop fidgeting with your microphone, maybe? Do I just hold it up like this? It's making a terrible noise, yeah. So I hold it up like this? Yeah. <clears throat> and stop fidgeting with it. Okay, I cool. told you before we started. It's She's t- a problem. She's used to shaking big black things. <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wanted to be a lawyer. Well, so I did, I, I went to law school and I did law and then I, I just left you, it. You did law? Yeah. How much oh, of nice. it? Yeah, like two, two years, three years. So you didn't complete? Drop out? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I same just, WhatsApp group? Yeah, same WhatsApp group. Because he dropped out of college. <laughs> this one. Well, like what, what, a, what, what a week in. Business. Business. Yeah. Oh, okay. A week in. I did a whole year, bro. Yeah. I did a whole year. year. See, that's how much you can't count. He needs an abacus. Because oh. he actually did a year when he was. A you know, you need to yeah. count, you need to be able to count to qualify into business school, right? Yeah, business. <laughs> yeah, it's I just got bored. Like I think I, w- I went into business school with the understanding that I was going to learn how to get rich. No, oh. <laughs> and then I figured at the end of the first year that they were just preparing me for employment, and that for me doesn't the, that doesn't the work. The lectures are not rich. No, the lectures are not rich. Business employs uh, prepares you for employment. Business school? Have yeah. you been to business school before? No, but yeah. I don't think they prepare you for employment. Dude, you should see the curriculum, especially in business management. They teach how to manage other people's businesses, mostly. Mm. Mostly. MBAs don't. When you get to the MBA, it's totally different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so business, you drop out of profit. Business is interesting. I'm doing business yeah, right a, now. Yeah, it's, it's interesting yeah. at certain levels. Oh, yeah. so you're starting right now? Yeah, I'm doing something with uh, Harvard School of Business. Ah, fancy. That's deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And fancy. What, 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 are you, what are you doing? You said you're doing something there. What are, what are you doing? Business. Okay. Business status. Oh, that's dope. How, how long is that? Um, I think it's like, it's almost three years. Okay. Yeah. Almost. And how much into I don't it know are you? months. They calculate months. So are you like into the first, second or last year? I've done like six, five, six months. Okay. Mm. All right. So, but why, why does it take you two years to realize it's not what you want to do? Or did you fail? Did you, you flop? Know, you know, I just thought, I, I just need to do it, you mm-hmm. know, because there's this whole thing of, Oh, if he's a pastor, then, you know, he's not educated. So he's just doing it because. Oh, he's failed in life. He failed in life. It's the only other option. Like that. That's the only other it's option. It's low hanging fruit. Exactly. In a way. So I yeah. wanted to take that away, but it wasn't working for me. I actually remember one time we were writing an exam. I was in another country uh, doing ministry. And one of my colleagues sent me a message to say, hey, where are you? It's, we are we are doing the, ex- the the exam today, and I was actually I was actually on the pulpit when you got the message. When I got the message so in another country, know? in another country, so you didn't know wow. you were doing the exam. No, I didn't. So it didn't come no, to you in the vision. I knew, but I lost <laughs> track of time, and I just found myself. I was actually on the pulpit when that thing was happening. Yeah, that's the day I decided I'm not. I just quit. That is not for me. Yeah. Well, you. Hey, but I wonder if it's a cheat code for a prophet, though, to like go to exams. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> don't you, don't you, you see the answers? I admit, I admit seeing my history paper. You see that when one? I was <laughs> when I was in uh, was in high school. Yeah, I literally saw the whole thing. I wow. knew which which one we were going to, you know, which essays they were. This is why you couldn't even have a girlfriend in high school, school, man. So I 
I knew exactly what. Exactly. This is why you couldn't you have, could a have a girlfriend. You, you, you already see what she's going to do to you. You, you know how <laughs> these Zambian chicks lie. You know yeah, before she so. lies to you. So how do your visions work? Like you uh, how does what? So you saw like the history, yeah. the paper. Yeah, so I actually but... saw I actually saw myself in the exam flipping the pages and I could see one of the most difficult things you can do in a vision is actually read. I believe that. Two things, reading and telling the time in a vision mm. because your conscious mind gets the sense of this is not real, especially time. So you snap out of it. I believe that. Yeah. Do, do you know why? I don't know if I told you this story. I'll mm-hmm. tell you the mm-hmm. story. You've you're a, full of stories today, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a prophet called Makandiwa. Mm-hmm. In Zimbabwe, have you heard of him? Yeah, yeah, I have. I knew of him, I'd never met him. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine knew him. And so I used to always talk about him, say this guy's a crook, blah, blah, blah. Long story short is, he's with my friend in his office, and then my friend calls me, says, come to my office. I go into his office, and we start talking about him in his presence, and I did not know it was him, mm-hmm. right? And so he's looking at me intently. Okay, long story short, I fast forward, I then figured out it's him. And then he then says to me, as you were talking, I had a vision about you. Mm-hmm. I said, interesting. Kind of like what Jessica Linger did. Mm. And then he says, do you want to know what that is? And I said, yes. He says, it's two things. The first thing he told me about my own family. Mm. Right? I'm like, Psst, it's not sure I could have told you that. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. It's not just my friend. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he tells me the setup. He tells me about my dad, the history, my mom, the history, and yada, yada, yada. But what's interesting and what ties into what you just said, he said, it was the second part of his vision. Mm -hmm. He said, what I see in you, before you told me, he warned me. He says, do you want to know? Obviously, I'm curious. I say, yes, I want to know. Then he says, but here's a warning. The devil might know your potential. So the devil would know that Kalenga has got potential to become president, but doesn't know his future. Doesn't know that he's going to become Mm. president. Right? So when the prophet tells Kalenga that you're going to be president, guess who else is listening? The devil. devil, So now he knows that this guy is going to become president. Mm -hmm. And so whatever obstacles or whatever this guy was going to face is going to double to make sure that he doesn't realize his Mm. potential. He says, I can tell you what the vision is, but chances are, the, um, the hurdles are now going to double. Mm-hmm. So do you still want me to tell you? I'm like, Psh, go ahead, man. <laughs> I know, bitch. Tell me. <laughs> he told you. And he did. How much of it came to fruition? No, it gets interesting. It yeah. gets interesting. So mm-hmm. he told me and he told Tinashe in the same room on the same day. Mm. What, what he said to me is, he said two things. He said, the first thing is I see you standing on a stage in a hall and there's people that are sitting and there are people that are at the doors. There's like mm. two doors. And there are people lining up, paying, and they're handing in tickets to get in the hall to hear you speak. So I don't know if you're going to be a public speaker, a motivational speaker, but I see people <laughs> paying to come and see you speak. Mm. Weird. Then the second thing is, I see a contract. But I can't read the contract because the words are blurry. Like he said. That's what I said. I agree yeah, with him. Yeah. He says there's only one word that I see that keeps popping up, and it's the word petrol. But everything else is blurry. Mm. And those are the only two things. And it says that, but the condition, because every prophecy, prophecy yeah, has, has a condition. condition. Mm-hmm. It says, you're, you've got two conditions to, for this thing to come to fruition. The first condition <sighs> is for the next eight months, you're supposed to pay your tithes. <laughs> and whatever church you're going to, don't come to mind. Whatever church you're going to, pay mm-hmm. your tithes. Every single month for the next eight months. Eight so what church do you go to? I told him. Says yes, at that church, pay your tithes every single month. Second condition is God is telling me that He wants to talk to you directly, not through anybody. So He wants a relationship with you because He doesn't have a relationship with you. Don't know mm-hmm. what the hell that means. Craziest thing is He then tells Tinashe, which is my friend, He then says, He always seems to be pretty simple. Get a pen. <laughs> he gets a pen. He says, Write these numbers down A, E, B, and some numbers. He says, that's your prophecy. He says, these look like a, like a registration plate. He says, yes. He says, what do they mean? Am I going to get hit by a car or whatnot? Mm. Long story short is, I think I paid my tithes for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 right? Well, like two months and then I just stopped paying. 
Yeah, you. I'll, I'll collect the, the rest. Almost a year later, <laughs> I promise I'm about to end my story. Almost a year later, Tinashe gets a contract to install prepaid meters. At, mm. a petro- at petrol stations. No, prepaid meters like electricity. Oh, electricity. All right. Yes. Okay, cool. so, he gets a con- so only two companies get that contract. But he did a really good job where he was ahead of schedule. Like three, four times ahead of schedule mm-hmm. that the electricity company as a bonus bought him and four of the directors brand new vehicles. I'll show you now. When he got his vehicle and we went to get road tax for his vehicle. The number plate was, was AV. As he was saying the registration, it hit him. Then he looked at me. Then he called his PA. They says, go back to my desk. Flip a couple of months back. There's a registration number that is there that is circled. Mm. The registration number that is there was, was the exact. registration number for the car that was bought a couple of months later. My. I'll show you the vehicle. And you still don't believe in God? Who, me? No. no. Oh, her. No. So that, that's the magic trick to you. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't. You can't tell me a story and expect me to change my mind. No, I'm not saying you should change your mind. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the car. That's a Porsche <laughs> hotel. Huh. Porsche. Porsche. Yeah. He, yeah. He was bought a Porsche. And these numbers were told to him before he even got the vehicle. Huh. Mm. That's an interesting Crazy. story. That's evolution right there. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get air horns, Insert please? Insert sarcasm. <laughs> How often do these things happen? Like, do you see yeah, these yeah, things I mean, in your yeah. congregants as well, like in your church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it happens, you know. Um, that's the nature of prophecy. Mm. You know, you get to, it's just like, let's say, for instance, let's say I ask a question, say, um, choose a number to, between one to 10. Mm. Just choose any number. No. She doesn't want. <laughs> No, it's not a number. No, I don't want to. Why? Because I don't want to. It's just an know. example. It's not. It's nothing. Just choose a number. Just choose a number. Say six to nine. He said one to ten four. Okay. So <laughs> let's say you see how he gave these numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it can come like you actually see it clearly like that. Yeah. Right? And sometimes it comes like. Pieces and puzzles, like like she said, you know, right. it just comes like bits and pieces, and then you kind of have to use wisdom to interpret the whole thing. Right. Yeah. But is it like every person? Sorry. Is it like every person, or what happens? Does does what happens? How does someone? How do you read someone's what prophecy? Like, is it like every person? What do you mean, every person? Like, is it is is it possible to prophesy to anyone? No. What mm. I mean is, like, you just mentioned earlier that you saw your history paper, but mm-hmm. didn't know when you were about to start writing examinations. Yeah. yeah. So then, when do when do the, when does these episodes happen to you? Do they happen? <laughs> episodes. <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't you any other word. Safety. No, like it's okay. When yeah, like, when these these thing is like a podcast word. <laughs> when yeah. do these happen to you? Like, when do they happen? Uh, I think it's also about the level of maturity in it, you know. Um, um, we have people who are so, like, well advanced in this space. Right. That it can happen any day, any time. You get the point? It can happen any day, any time. And then there are others who it just happens, like, at certain times. So when you are growing in it, before you develop the skill to actually be able to do it any time, Mm. It will only happen like, you know, a certain period right, of time. Right, yeah. right. Express. So at, at what point in your um, prophetic career, or what would you say like the height of it mm-hmm. uh, has been so far? I don't think it's gotten to a height. Okay. But... Um, or the most memorable, maybe. Most memorable. Do you mean like in ministry or... In ministry. In ministry. Yeah. Mm. I think what what was like a high was when I did ministry in Botswana. Mm-hmm. So in 2017, I moved to Botswana and, you know, I did, I started a church there. Yeah. And then, you know, later on, I got, I had people from, you know, government offices and stuff like, you know, these, the who's who right. coming to my church. Wow. And actually ended up being um, one of the only pastors to actually go to the president's office 
and actually pray. Was it Kama? Who was it? Yeah, was Kama. Kama, Kama, then, right? it was Kama at the time. Yeah, you guys have got the same skin tone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that was kind of like the hype because I'd never been, never met a president before, never been to a president's office before, and stuff like that. So for me, that was kind of like. And what's and what's the biggest prophecy you've ever made? I mean, we see guys predicting mm-hmm. election results for countries and you know things like that. It's 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 it's, it's a, quite a number. I think which one? I don't know if I can say this one was the biggest, but I've done a couple of them. Mm, I think I've done a couple. Would have to go back. There are so many. There are so You've many. got your assistance here. Do you guys There's remember? So many. No, I, too. I did. Well, I did the prophecy for. In your opinion, what's the biggest prophecies ever made that just blew your mind? He was about to say something. Oh, I did sorry. one like two uh, some some month a month ago. It was a rugby game. Yeah, we're talking about this last week. I'm, yeah. I'm a president too. <laughs> Every single five, five games in a row. He's five predicted games five games in a row. In a row. I have... Dude, like open, open, open so the predict, predict this one now, the final. The, uh, between the All Blacks and South Africa? Yeah. That's easy. Ooh. Oh, uh, the box. South Africa. Are you serious? As serious as a heart attack, boo boo. I think it's, it's going to be the All Blacks. Don't play with me. <laughs> Don't play with me now. <laughs> so that's just one of you know we've, Tessie, we've done a number. I like you, but I have to side with Elson on this one. God, Five yeah. games in a row can't be coincidental. So you're going, you're going off of what? The fact that he's right. He's, he's nailed five games in a row. It's gonna be the old blacks. Okay. He's going to bankrupt all the betting companies Watch. in Zambia on that day. Watch. Yeah. So I don't know, have... Maybe they can say which one was the biggest. No, so, so, which, which one is which, like which your guys? biggest mind blowing? For you, which one was it? The one you prophesied about the Kenyan elections. elections. The Kenyan elections. You prophesied the Kenyan. Anybody correct? Is that because you are from Kenya? <laughs> <laughs> no, where <Yes>. to? <clears throat> I think. Let me tell you which one I think blew your mind. The one where some person had a shorter leg than the other. <laughs> That was healing. That was well, healing. That was healing. Not yeah. well, well, she was mind blown by that. Uh, Wait, one what leg. happened? Apparently, someone grew bones. Mm. One leg was shorter than the yeah. other. Well, he made that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be very interesting. And the to legs see aligned and during the service. Yeah. Uh, that, mm-hmm. that happened in Malaysia. She had um, an accident, and they end up had, having like um, she had a spine uh, complication. Hey, it's about a height issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> We, we we did that one. That was years ago. I don't know the height that I want to be. <laughs> said, is this something you'd like to work on, maybe? Because this guy, he, <laughs> on the height. please, child of God, please kneel down. <laughs> your height is fine. Maybe if I can get to. <laughs> nah, your height is fine. Your height is good. What are you? One point four. Seven. One point. <laughs> one point seven. One point seven. Yeah, that's okay. One point seven is fine. It's, it's, it's good. Okay. Mm-hmm. But he's very insecure about it, so please help him. No, because you make fun of me. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> it's, 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 it's good. It's still. I'm 1.7. Oh, so so, so we're making fun of me then. Yeah, but with your weight, you look tall. Oh, I see. Yeah, but I he's just a fat I guy. You, so. you. I'm not fat. Your face is fat. Is it? Does <laughs> <laughs> no, he has, actually look he like has, Joel Austin just a little? Oh, you know what? Gosh. He does, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like a black version of... Bam, see? I need to talk to my mom. He actually does, eh? Yeah, I've always told him this, like a broke up black black version of. I remember how I remember I remember how that photo trended when you put. Was it you put them together? No, of course it was me. Hey, that photo went, man, because everybody agreed with you, and I don't. I still don't see it, eh? Where is it? Um, I need it. I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you. And people keep, people still tag me like in the, that like photo too. Like the narrow, too. the narrow face. Mm. I need it, it. Are you looking for it, Kalinga? Yeah. yeah. Do you have prophecies that have never come to pass? Do you have what? Prophecies that have never come to pass. Um, and I don't also, think, how do you tell your prophecies from God or the devil? God, the devil does not give any prophecy. Oh, really? No. Yeah. There is, right? There is, yeah. I hope nobody I think said. the chicks as well. <laughs> Are you listening to this you know, you know the, yeah. Yeah. Mm, kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. This is. Yeah, there, there is a similarity. Oh, you, you had the photo. I've been looking for it the whole time. Yeah. Yes, so he, she had asked if you have any that didn't come to pass. It's not really the prophecy not coming to pass. Mm. You know, um, 
prophecy is complex. The, the whole concept of prophecy is right. it's very complicated. Educate us. You know, for instance, I'll give you an example, even in, in, in the scriptures, mm. um, how that God had said to the Israelites that they would only be in Babylon for a certain time, period of time. Mm. They exceeded that. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied and said, it's going to be this, this long. They went beyond that. Until, you know, people like Ezra and them, you know, Nehemiah went into the, the scriptures and began to, you know, they discover, say, wait a minute, the prophecy, the time of the prophecy says mm. by this time we're supposed to, you know, we're supposed to, 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 to leave this place. So there's all those things connected to prophecy happening at a specific time or, or in a specific way. Another example is um, the book of Jonah. The whole book of Jonah is about a prophecy that never came to pass. God spoke to Jonah and said, go and tell these people, I'm going to destroy land. Nineveh, yeah. And they repented. And guess what? The whole thing changed. They, they, were, they were never, in fact, if you read the last part of uh, the book of Jonah, he actually goes into depression because he gives a prophecy that is not fulfilled. In the sense of, you know, God changes oh, so his mind. Therapy, huh? Yeah, he got he got depressed. So that's they have been <laughs> that haven't come to pass. Not necessarily. No, I have never. I don't think I recorded any prophecy that has not come to pass. Okay. No, we haven't recorded any so far. Speaking of the Bible, I've 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 had this question for the longest time, and unless I, you I know never, any, then you can bring it to our attention, and then we can. Can, can you can you be fast yeah. on the on the thing? Because then her mic is muted. You're saying. Ahead. You're saying. You're saying. I forgot. I don't know, Cop, how can we fix this mic of hers somewhere? Like, even right now, the way she's just fidgeting, it's giving terrible feedback in my headphones. Okay, here's what we can the do. Tabletop stand. Mm. You, do you want to come and sit here next to the prophet and then I can sit there and hold the mic? Yeah, come. Come, be mm. next. You, you want to burn, burst into flames? Well, no? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not is like there, is, you want to burst into is flames? She, is she a vampire? No? <laughs> <laughs> Only vampires burst Because right now you're the equivalent of holy water in her life. Wow. Yeah. That's so, not how that works. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so if it we, went through, there wouldn't be people like me. You're talking about the Bible. Yeah, I'm you're fine? <laughs> All right. You can try to pretend. Like, <laughs> you were talking about the Bible. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, I've, I've, I just give, yeah. Yeah, I've, mm. I've had this question for the longest time. It's been bugging me for years. And I don't think I ever get a satisfactory answer. Mm -hmm. And this instruction or should i say this it's not an instruction mm -hmm. oh, well this is it's called a message this message actually happens in the book of mark and in the book of luke mm -hmm. and i believe that any person who asks for for forgiveness from god is going to be forgiven mm -hmm. through faith right mm -hmm. but then in those two books this pops up twice where the bible it says itself says for this one sin, you shall never be forgiven. The mm -hmm. one blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Because in the book of uh, Mark 3, 28, if I, if I can go that, to that quickly. Mm -hmm. You say Mark what? Uh, Mark 3, 28 to 30. It says, truly I tell you, people mm -hmm. will be forgiven for their sins. Mm -hmm. And this is Jesus telling the masses, right? Yeah. You'll be forgiven of any sin. Mm -hmm. But whosoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can <coughs> never be forgiven. Mm-hmm. Does this mean that even if you ask for forgiveness, that forgiveness will not be granted? Hell no. Is he, Jesus saying you'll never be forgiven? Yeah, How is. does that work? He is. Is there any salvation for such people ever? No. No. How does it work? You're done. You're done. That's so, it. Just, I mean, it's something that uh, yeah. theologians have debated over time. I believe mm. he was talking about, um, you know, rejecting the work he, he was doing in person like him mm -hmm. at the time. You understand? Of course, you see, if you see the the whole concept of blasphemy, mm -hmm. it's really uh, you're talking about making a mockery or even just rejecting. Denying the existence denying of the, the Holy Spirit. Of yeah. the Holy Ghost. Do you hear this? Yeah. Do you hear this? I'm, I'm ready to go where the party's at. I've been ready yeah, just for Just put the microphone time. closer to your mouth. Up. And yeah, just, just do that. Pull, pull. Yeah, yeah, just that. That's enough. Uh -huh. You were yeah. saying you're ready to go where? Where the party is. <laughs> and where's the party? <laughs> <laughs> so how do you believe in one and not the other? 
You're the people who believe in it. Oh, and so she's saying, and, I'm going to that, whatever no, you believe you, in. you're the people who believe in it and you are basing your judgment on that belief. All right, I rest my case. Yeah, you were saying? <coughs> the forgiveness? Yeah, so, so the forgiveness, the forgiveness part, I mean, the unforgiveness, mm. right? Because it says you won't forgive. Right. Even if you repent. Even if you repent. You yeah. shall never be forgiven for that one sin. Yeah. Can I ask a, a non-profit question? Yeah, sure. So how do you reconcile the fact that the Bible doesn't talk about hell? And yes, people evangelize that they are, people will go to hell. The Bible doesn't talk about hell? Which part of the Bible talks about hell? Yeah. Yes. Jesus you... believes in annihilationism. Like you will not exist if you don't believe. But then he never says that you will burn in hell. There's literally verses of Jesus saying you've been in hell. Okay. Mike, which one? There's so many. Okay. Can you please Google one for us? Well, there is a Matthew 10 verse 28. Where he says... Elsa knows a Bible verse. No, Google <laughs> does. <laughs> Google does. Where it says yeah. hell is a place where our bodies and souls will be destroyed. He, he talks about do not be afraid of the one who kills the Do body. not fear those who kill the body, body but cannot kill the soul. Kill the Rather soul. fear him who can destroy both soul so and my, body in hell. So my question yeah. will be... Yeah. Can Did you just, open Matthew 10 verse 28? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was reading right now. Jesus, Matthew 10, verse 28. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do not fear those who kill the body, but mm-hmm. cannot kill the soul. Just Rather, like fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. hell. And apparently the word hell is said 54 times. 31, in the, 31 times in the Old Testament and 23 in the New Testament. And do not fear those. When you were a Christian, what book were you reading? Are you serious? <laughs> Were you reading the LeBron James version? <laughs> no, I was reading. I, anyways, I'm not even gonna lie. I don't. I never. I was reading the Bible, but I was raised in the Catholic Church. And your mind, your mind just sends out the word hell when you're reading the Bible, huh? No, actually, we had a pastor, a priest, actually, one of mm. the people that helped me see so the clearly. Bible for what <laughs> well, it is. Well, clearly, did a terrible job. No, he didn't. because he turned into an atheist. Yeah, the opposite of what he's supposed to do. No, because the idea is if you're going to believe in something, the conviction has to come from you, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody else should tell you that. So there shouldn't be anything wrong with people becoming atheists because if God is real and if faith is what it, people say it is, we'll find our way back. Mm. Well, one thing that I've always lived by is it is better to live your life. I, I don't want to mess this up. It is better to live your life believing there's a God only for you to die and find out there's no God than for you to live your life believing there's no God for you to die and find out there <gasps> is one. If God is as merciful and as just as people say he is. He shall forgive. Do you have something no, no, no. against if, God? No, like if God is, no, I don't have. He, there's God in the Bible. Do you mm. know the God in the Old Testament? Yeah. Ruthless. Exactly. Yeah. So if God is as kind and as just and as all-knowing as people say he is, why would he judge me based off the fact that I didn't say hallelujah when all my life I've been a good person? Because well, you I, didn't accept him. No, but but I live by the principles. Yeah, but you need to accept him. Why is that more important? As, uh, Christianity is a faith-based religion. No, but then I'm asking why is that more important? Why does that supersede the idea that someone is a good person without believing in God? Good is subjective. Define yeah. that. Define what? Well, how, Actually, how people is don't good go, subjective? People, people don't go to heaven because they are good. How, why do they go? Because I, I thought it was if you ask for forgiveness, then you will have entry. From who? From from God. If you, ask for, for, if you ask so for forgiveness. So how are you going to ask for forgiveness from somebody you don't believe I'm in? I'm not going to ask for forgiveness. I'm not trying to be a religious. In fact, let me say, I'm not trying to be a religious person. I'm trying to be a good person. A good according to good, who? According to, according according to the Because God. when you're a Christian, you've got a book and rules. But then that's, that guide that, you, so which what, is called the Bible. So what happened to the people that existed before that book? Are they all going to hell? Were they all bad? Why that's, is that's why different. is morality based off a book that is also that's an different. advocate they for didn't slavery? Know. They didn't know. You know. No, it doesn't matter if I knew. So if in fact, if God is going to judge those guys based on the fact that they didn't know, but they were good people, mm-hmm. what is that? Why is that different for me? God has placed something in every human being. Which is know? what? Just your, your, to start with, you're conscious. Okay. What about serial killers? They have one. They just they choose one. to ignore it. To... But none, most of them think what they're doing isn't wrong. They know it's wrong. Some of them think Why do they hide? 
because they don't want to be caught and stop what they're so doing. So some conscious. No, no, no. Conscious. They don't want to be caught they so okay, that they if, can stop what they're doing. Because then it's the thrill of what's happening. Good, why do they have to hide the body? Why do they have to? You know, there's just so much, you know, effort that goes into doing bad. Doing bad. And I agree. So if we agree that people are good without God, then why do you need to say hallelujah to get entry into into grace? Like, well, how does that even make any sense? Because you have to accept him. <laughs> okay, let me accept Allah. Yeah, go ahead, accept him. So, Whosoever believeth in him will not die but have eternal life. Some of the us, key there is the belief. Remember I said yeah. Christianity is a faith-based so religion? I'm a bad person, mm. but I believe in God. Have you repented from so your sins? So if I say, God, forgive me, does it that would, wash away my bad? Everything. I wouldn't want to be in a place with people like that. If my <laughs> if my morality is yeah. based off of the idea that I will burn in hell mm. or I will not exist after a certain period, then I'm a bad person. If you do good things because they are good and you're doing them to help others, why should you be judged off of an idea you're it's a, living in? It's a in very God? cyclical topic we can, we can actually discuss it's the not whole cyclical. night. <laughs> it's not it's we'll, we'll, We're going to keep coming back to the same point. Mm. We're going to keep coming back to the same point. The point is people are good without God. People were good <laughs> without God. And people do continue to be good without God. The people that set boundaries to an entry to a f- fantasy land are you guys. <laughs> Tasiana, the, the, the lightning that is going to strike you is doing <laughs> it's, 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 right now. It's push-ups, all right? I do not want to be near you <laughs> that day. <laughs> but no, I like, I am, you know, I'm a good person. Why would you say that? Like, uh, well, the deal is still out on that yeah. one. You look very young, man. Like, extremely. And I'm sure... <laughs> how, you've been in ministry for how long now? I don't know. I think maybe... It depends on what you call ministry. Um, let's say after high school. After uh, no, school. after you drop out of law school. No, you're already ministering then. So um, it's, it's difficult okay, to find I, a starting point. Yeah, eh? it's, it's, it's yeah. difficult to start a, uh, you find a starting point. But I started ministry, active ministry in 2016. 2016. So, yeah. okay, seven years, seven years seven give or years take. Ago, yeah. And but I was doing ministry before, before that. Then, yeah, it was just... And do, you know, but right. now when I say this is... This is ministry. I'm this in this ministry. full time now. So do you have like a particular church, a base? Mm-hmm. Who is that? Yeah. So I, I'm actually founder of a church. It's called God Embassy. And we... This is in South Africa. It's in South Africa. Right. It's, okay. We're in nine countries now. Nine wow. countries? Yeah. That's yeah. big, man. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. Nine Which countries. one? Did you ever... Um, South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, um, Iswatini. We are in um, United Kingdom. We are in Dubai. We are in Kenya. Where was there the other places? Namibia. Um, yeah, about nine. Did you have the problem of people judging you by your looks? Yeah, of course. All, when all starting. the time. All the time. How would you handle those situations? I think I just ignore it now. And how would people let you know that they have a problem with your with your age? And because even now you yeah. look like a really young man, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do. I do. Um how old I are think you? it's genetics. How old are you? I'm twenty nine. Why are you making it sound like he's old? No, no, no. He's he 29, is. but he looks 22, yeah, 21. Yeah, I'm 22, 22, 22. And it's a family thing. Their whole family, they're just... Yeah. Because when Paul Sylvia Moon are the same age, yeah, but I the mean, guy he, is still small and... He looks, he looks, yeah. Yeah. Although he's got a bald head now. He's balding, so... Oh, he's, he's taking over. Yeah. Wow. All the hair's gone, bro. Anyway, so how would you handle <laughs> those that... And how would they let you know that they're not comfortable with you being in front of the congregation, especially with the way you look? No, I think with the... You, you actually be surprised how forgiving a congregation can be. Mm. They actually believe the younger you are, uh, in a way, the more powerful mm. or more innocent or whatever yeah. space. Have you ever seen a child praying in church? How people react? Yeah. They're like, wow. But then this, this, this can only be God. This is God. But then again, Jesus was uh, was a young man too. Yeah, he was. Yeah, you only started preaching at thirty, though, and he died at thirty three. Yeah. yeah. So what do you What do you think about? Because as we were talking about the countries where you're present in, mm-hmm. I could see similarities with Hubert Angel, mm-hmm. and I remember he had this um, miracle money thing. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that sort of promote? laziness where you feel you really don't have to work uh, and there's another guy who preached off miracle petrol he says as soon as you get back in your car if your car wasn't empty it's gonna have a full tank 
Mm-hmm. Doesn't that like promote laziness like amongst your and, congregants? Uh, I don't I don't really think that's a way to look at it, you know? I mm. I think miracles are just supernatural events that just prove the existence of God, you know? Yeah. So um, the, I think the danger is when people take miracles and they want to live off that. That's my point. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> that's my point that yeah. oh, you know what on the 25th I'm going to go to church. Mhm. And I'm going to ask for my rent money. Yeah, well, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. And the other thing that I also want to find out is, <clears throat> I've not seen a humble prophet. Ever. Like a what? Humble. Oh, humble. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fancy watches, flashy cars, flashy suits. Why, why is that? Private jets. First class why, flights. Why is that? Why is that? Why is humility? Um, why do you? Why do you connect humility to lack? To what? Lack. No, because or poverty. No, I hear you. Because yeah. I feel like if I am going to, do you think God is humble? No. Yeah, I think so. No. You don't think He God is? God is well, humble. Okay. Okay, so basically, if I am going to listen to somebody, or if somebody is going to deliver me, it has <clears> to be somebody that I either connect with and somebody that I don't feel intimidated or I don't feel out of place. Do you think the do you think um people who are flamboyant, if we're going to use that word, don't have other people who I think it's, I think this thing is a target market as well, you know? No, just finish your question. People that are flamboyant. People yeah. who are flamboyant, mm-hmm. right? You say you want someone you can relate with. Mm. Yeah, they also have people, they, you know, who relate to them. Yeah, the people that are out of my text bracket. Yeah, if if that's that's the that's the way we look at it. Yeah, but it so shouldn't be like that. Sure. You, someone should actually be inspired. My my inspiration is not for money. Yeah, but you we, know what I mean. My inspiration, inspiration is salvation. Yeah. So if you are saying that I should be inspired because you've got a Rolex, that's not what my inspiration is. Mm-hmm. So my inspiration is salvation. I want to so be safe. What happens after salvation? I'm, I'm good wherever I am. There's life after salvation. So it could be. I hear you. So once again, you mm-hmm. make it sound like the inspiration is in wealth. People go to church to ask for different things, right? Mm-hmm. Others go for marriage. <clears throat> others want to be healed from sickness. Mm-hmm. Um, others want salvation. It's got nothing to do with how good you look. Mm-hmm. And so all those people that went to Jesus never really went there and they said, no, I want to be rich. Everybody went there and he looked like them. He fit in. He was not there, you know, wearing, if, if there was Gucci, like Gucci flip-flops. He did. Proof of that is the guards dividing up his his garment because it was, and he paid taxes. Point. If he had no income, they he actually paid taxes. They yeah. actually bet for it. What did he pay taxes? Yeah, he paid taxes. Yeah, and yeah. he paid yeah. taxes. But, but, oh, but, 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 it was but like miracle guess, money as well. Yeah. Remember the tax came from but, the fish. But you get my point, though, right? Yeah, no, I understand where you're coming <laughs> from. You're talking about you know relatability, mm. if, if we can put it like that. So majority of people don't relate with some pastors or prophets because they are flashy. But that's mm. not true. Because, which part, which part is because true? if you look at the people you say uh, people don't relate to, they actually have huge followings. So what are those people doing there? <sighs> look, I don't know. I, I've never yeah. been to a Pentecostal church. Yeah. Um, yes, you have. You came to Brisbane City yeah, Church once, and I felt like um like an imposter. So you I, want? I told you this. I'm used to my church, a traditional church, obviously. a traditional church. So it's preference. So you can't you can't spiritualize preference. <clears throat> it's just preference. That's what you prefer. Yeah. Some I feel, people don't. I, I feel, and uh, to answer your question, I once went to a Catholic church. Right. I didn't last five minutes. Can Why? I, hear you? I was already, too quiet. I was already dozing. Oh my gosh! You know, I was, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite. I actually prefer that. To answer your question, yeah. the one thing that I've realized, you know, the um, the two three times that I've gone to a Pentecostal church is they have got talking points. It's either they're talking about marriage, they're talking about money, they're talking about healing. So they've got trigger points, which they know a lot of people um 
want to be delivered from. It's actually not right? a lot so of people. So if you get a lot of people, say that again. It's not. A, it's actually not a lot of people. Or it's not a lot of people that do it. You say a lot of people, like it's a lot of people want to hear that. That's what, yeah. You don't. Because, no, I don't. Yeah, and so that's why I don't a go lot there. Of people. No, you know, I said a lot of people that go there. Oh, a lot of people that go there. Yeah. So if you find a lot of people that go to churches like that, mm-hmm. that is a lot of what is preached about. Yeah. And you hear people, whenever they say, uh, we are going to pray against the spirit of poverty or the spirit of not having a child or mm. not getting married, you hear how that triggers people. And mm-hmm. you look at... You look at the audience and you see how they are triggered by that. So it feels as though that is why, regardless of how the person looks, so they would rather compromise to say, okay, I'm going to give this person who's got a lot more money than I do, extra money, because I will sow a seed where I'll get A, B, C, and D. So it's We've about the money. An angel. Is it about the money? For, yeah, for most people that go you, there. For you, is the no. issue about money. You're talking about human angel as well? You're adding human angel? Yes. You would notice how people would give him cars because they feel like it's a seed. Like who? who human who, angel. Who, gave, just who gave him a car? The guy that gave him the red Bentley. Mm. Did you hear about that? Mm-mm. Yeah. So just check that out. Mm. So that's that's just what my, my issue is, mm. especially with prophets. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's, it's, I think it comes down to I think most people say, why don't you talk about salvation, right? Um, the Bible is clear, it says to some he gave, pastors, apostles. So these have different functions. And if you want healing, there are places you can go for. You can go to for healing. Because salvation, can come we to talk you. about salvation. Or the hospital. Those who are saved don't need salvation. You simply don't. If you are saved now, you don't need salvation. After you need a different saved, message. You now need a different message. So now you need to learn how to um, be successful, okay? Because mm-hmm. being successful, when you're a successful Christian, you can then influence, you know, people in a positive way or in a Christian way. Because if we say it's positive, maybe it's subjective or something. If you say uh, in, in a Christian way, it then advances the whole idea or the whole concept of, you know, being a Christian with a difference, you see. So those people are looking for healing. You can't blame them for going to a place that is talking about healing. And the reason why those people are talking about healing is because remember, there is demand. And there's for when there is demand, there must be supply. So is that what it is? You're just supplying what people are looking for? Demand and supply. You can't. You can't. Uh, it's not like a hustler there, bro. No, no, no. It's just... No, it's look at the, the, scripture, the scripture Jesus read. It says... You are so biased. You know that? The spirit, the spirit no, I'm agreeing with what he's me. saying. Yeah. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay? I think if you read that, that portion of scripture, mm. he says, he begins to mention the things that the spirit of the Lord is upon him to do. To deliver the oppressed, to open the eyes of the... You know? Then it gets into all these things. So... <clears throat> Um, bondage for wait, wait, you. Wait, which, which bondage? No, I'm no not the sexual bondage, Elson. <laughs> bondage for you oh. might be maybe, let's say, sickness. Okay? The same spirit gives that ability to deal with that. So if I get a lot of people who are coming to me and they their issue is they are sick, obviously I'll preach a message that is About in line healing, with, yeah. you know, healing. Yeah, man. Okay, so I had uh, told my friend that I was coming here to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Oh, like an evil spirit. You know, you know how like when you cast out a demon, it comes like seven times. Wow. You had to get back up. Just keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked the question about uh, Jesus not believing in hell. Mm-hmm. So she's telling me that the word Jesus used, the Hebrew word Jesus used was Gehenna. Gehenna. Mm-hmm. And Gehenna is not hell. What is it? It's a... Uh, like a value of death or yes, something. Yes, a yeah. value of death. Mm-hmm. And then she also goes to say that uh, Jesus explicitly preached about um, annihilation, even for lack, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. So now, if that's what God, Jesus actually preached, and I'm assuming Christianity is what being Christ, Christ-like. So how do you reconcile the church telling people that they will burn in hell like these two have been telling me today? 
if they don't believe in God. Mm-hmm. If you don't, you don't, you don't believe in God. Yeah, like how do you reconcile that? Why do you guys fear manga? Like tell people to, to like fear. Like why do you preach that? But why do why 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 are you afraid? I'm well, not, not af- you. I mean, I'm talking about the people who are afraid. Why are they afraid? Are you serious? No, I will I'm, burn I, you for the rest of your life. Visit, why are you afraid? Like, isn't that logical? No, it, it's just a question. I don't understand your question. Why are you afraid? Because people are afraid of fire. They're afraid of fire? The motivation is never fear. Mm, interesting. Fear is never the motivation. Then why put it there? If no, it's that's not. That's a consequence of an action. No, but then it's not there biblically. No, like, it's it's there. It's, I mean, we can get into. No, we're, we're not gonna. We're not gonna get into that because yeah. I'm assuming Christianity today is based off the New Testament, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not discounting what the Old Testament is saying, yeah. but then the 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 covenant, the new covenant is between Jesus and His people. Mm-hmm. So Jesus constantly says, "You are going to Gehenna, mm-hmm. not the burning pit of fire." Why yeah, but if you read the book of, um, sorry to cut you, if you read the book of Revelation, the Bible says, and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. The Re- book of Revelation was is not a book of prophecy, though. It's a, it's it? that's that's literally like a book talking about Nero, the Caesar. No, if you read the last part of Revelation, it literally says anyone who adds or subtracts from this book. Prophecy. It's actually prophecy. Okay, so the historical context of the book of Revelation. No, just because, because Revelation it, is John being shown know, the end time, right? Yeah, the end time. Okay, but so most people, Google, just Google it. Just check. Yeah, but this Google, you know, this Google has a lot of things. Uh-uh. <laughs> it doesn't have. I'm telling you. Revelation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's about Caesar. Wow. <laughs> Only because people thought Caesar was the Antichrist. No, at but the time. then it's okay. People thought you Caesar said Nero, was not Caesar. Nero, yeah, yeah. So, Caesar and Nero was, used to burn things down. Don't no, you go by a city and burn it down? Yeah. You can call it a book of prophecy. Hey, do you, do you have the Bible on your phone? Yes, I do. Are you able to go to Daniel 12, verse 2 and 3? <laughs> And but the, you know, and he the can, Bible he can, reads? He can answer my question while this what? Daniel 12, verse 2 and 3. Verse 2. Mm-hmm. Daniel 12, verse 2. Should I read? Yeah, go ahead. Um, as the Bible study continues, I'm reading from the book of Daniel 12, verse 2 to 3. Mm-hmm. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the reading of the word. (laughs) Praise be to God. (laughs) Amen. Am I reading the right verse? Yeah, you're reading the right verse. Okay, right. so okay. what are you are you trying to emphasize that no, I'm I still going me. to hell? <laughs> <laughs> no, but then I'm asking, why does the church use fear mongering to keep people in its place? Well, the church is using fear. I do uh, actually that's wrong. But like I said, f- um, fear is not is not the is not a motivation for going to heaven. So it's obviously if hell so- is a consequence of an action. But then Jesus mm-hmm. did not say there's a hell. He keeps Jesus on refer- We read the verse that says no, Jesus this is what hell. <laughs> the word that he uses, which is translated no, to hell, Gehenna, is Gehenna. Gehenna in refers the Hebrew, to a valley exactly. that was outside the, 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 the city where they would burn all the, yeah, the, yeah, the, all the dead animals, yes. everything. They would yes, burn them so there. So that is what's in the Hebrew. Exactly. Translated. So if you look at the, the, the Hebrew mm-hmm. um, text, Okay. Of course, you know the Bible uses all this symbolism and everything, right? A place like that exists in the spirit. So Jesus didn't say it exists though. No, Jesus, if you if you if you look at Jesus' style of preaching, he uses he uses things that people can relate to. No. People that things that people can understand. Parables, stories of events that happened, um, things like, 
you know, even Gehenna. Okay. It is easier to explain to a Jew at the time what that kind of place looks like because they understood what Gehenna was. So when Jesus said um, those who don't believe in him will perish and those that do will have everlasting life, yeah. you do realize that he... Can you stop touching the microphone? <laughs> yeah. So that's, that should be John 3 verse 16, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So Jesus literally said that if you are you don't believe in God, you will definitely not exist anymore. It's not non-existence. It's what? It's uh, you will be burning in hell when he explicitly mentions the time where people will be going to Gehenna in the verses that he needed to say that. What do you mean? One of the most famous verses, mm-hmm. Jesus literally says that if you don't believe in God. John 3.16. Yes, if yeah. you don't believe in God, you will be annihilated. I don't think those were the words of Jesus, actually. For God, was it? For God so loved the John world. John wrote that, mm. not Jesus. So John was wrong. What else was he wrong about? <laughs> no, he wasn't wrong. So John misquoted Jesus. What other misquotes? No, he wasn't quoting. He wasn't oh, quoting so Jesus. what was he saying exactly? Because I'm assuming... Are you trying to say people will just be exterminated and they'll just Because, you know, that, that actually would be like the merciful thing to do. And since God is all-knowing and all-loving... Like the rapture. Like just say, you didn't believe in me. You're not... Like we're not Bounce. gonna throw we're not gonna throw you in a pit of fire. You had that choice. You said no. So stop existing. Mm-hmm. As opposed to people having having a party upstairs. You can hear <laughs> the music and you are cooking down there. Down there, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Isaiah, yes. I think we need to wrap this up now. We've uh there's a lot that we left on the table. But anything else you want? To, yeah, no. yeah. I mean bring bring it on. Yeah. Anything else? No. Um Shout out to Bed Lion, which we did not speak about. We'll make sure they're in the intro. <laughs> These are the people that pay our bills, imagine. Okay. And we, we forgot to give them a shout out. We sadly do not have people that pay tights for <laughs> offerings. <laughs> I see so, what you're doing there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Bed Lion, uh, Right Price. I see you've got a very fancy phone there. So there's um there's a there's a store called Right Price. Okay. Where if you've got your old gadgets mm-hmm. and you need a, like the latest iPhone 15. What what iPhone is that? This so, is uh, Esh, I'm behind. 14, the 13, the 14? 14 it's a 14. The 14. Yeah. Yeah, so you can actually yeah. take it to right price. And then he gives you the 15. Ah, okay. And then you just top up whatever the difference is. Okay. Yeah. So if you've got a, an actually old laptop. Actually, 15 already. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Oh, you got the 15 already? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know for your, for your, that was of your course, wife, right? Yeah. That we saw earlier? No, my wife is, um, is in South Africa right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Asa, is there anything that, you know, throughout this whole episode that maybe you wanted to touch on, but we didn't quite ask you about it? Not really, you know. Um, I didn't come here having an opinion of anything. Right. I just, of course, wanted to hear. And she raised some very interesting points. Right. I think I, I think she's a very interesting Please person. Pray for her. I, I would like to. I would like to kind of share ideas mm-hmm. with her. And maybe we can end this. What, we can end this episode with a prayer. <laughs> you know, be the, to hear. It'll be the first time this podcast ever has a prayer in it. <laughs> yes. One hundred episodes. Yeah. Uh, one wow. other thing as well. Yeah, well, yeah, we're going to to a hundred episodes. Uh, yeah. One other thing that I also wanted to find out is how can not you, mm-hmm. but us mere mortals like Kaling and I, <laughs> yes, tell the difference between a genuine and a fake prophet? That's a good question. Um, you can't. Oh, oh we're doomed then. <laughs> no, you can't. Because spiritual things are spiritually. But can same. you tell? Between a fake prophet and a real prophet, it's very difficult. But can you? It's possible, but with, it's with very your difficult. spiritual eye, it is very difficult. It's extremely difficult. Difficult doesn't make it impossible. Yeah, but like you said, it's possible. There are some telltale signs, but wait, um, telltale signs. But I thought in the spirit you can tell. Yeah, there are there are telltale signs that I can tell you. For instance, yeah, if it's simply not in line with the word of God. Like if a guy's just turning water to petrol in the church and that's it, then that's different. I don't do that, but okay. that's different. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, if 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 we talking about the word of God, mm. anything that goes against you can use that as your standard. But again, how people interpret the word of God is different because how you interpret it yeah. will be different to how Yibit Angel, Makandiwa, and whatnot. Same word, but mm-hmm. different interpretation and mm-hmm. different delivery. Mm-hmm. So how then can you say this is wrong and this is right when it's basically 
different interpretations. That's when you have to be, you know, the, the spiritual part comes in because you you really can't. I, Do you I'll know any fake prophets? Um, yeah, Zambia has a lot. And does, is Bushiri real? Who's that? Bushiri, Malawi. Shepherd. Oh, yeah, of course. Really? Of course it's fake. He, you said real, why are you putting fake? That man is a real prophet. Yeah, he is. Like, like morally and consciously a real prophet. I, I don't know. You have experience? I've seen what he's done in the news. What do you mean so, I've done? Oh, so you. I want so, <laughs> wait, just, did you see, did you see this video of him levitating? Did you see it? Like when he was Every, coming down the stairs? That. Everybody saw that, yeah. <laughs> You guys, I think for the first time ever, listen to this podcast in a prayer. Isaiah, please. No, we need to. To be the first time ever. Father, I pray for the souls of these people. Please. Yes. Our viewers, <laughs> wait, our lovely wait, fans. Wait, right before we end, because we're going to end in the next like 60 seconds and hopefully you can, you can, mm-hmm. you can close us off with a prayer. Yeah. Um, you asked him, oh yeah, he said, you asked him if there was anything that he expected us to ask him, yeah, right? And yeah. he said no. Yeah, he said no. Okay. Oh, did, did you respond to that though? He did. He said what he didn't come here with an agenda. No, oh, he no, didn't no, come no, here with no, an agenda. No, no, no. That's, that's no, like, I mean, the question was during, different. During the process he of this say, interview. Was there something I wanted to say? Yeah, is there anything you that said, we did not touch on? We did not touch on. Yeah, um, that you would have hoped maybe would have touched on. I think it's something that went around. I think I think this is the best platform to kind of clear mm. the air on yeah. the whole thing. I think a couple of years back, you know, when the whole election process was, was taking place, mm-hmm. I gave a prophecy about the government at the time. Mm. And that thing went viral because somebody took a clip from a 16 minute video and took a clip, I think two minutes, that said, PF will win. Oh, that was you? Yeah. And they put it on the social media and it was everywhere. So what did you say exactly in that clip? If you see the video, the the whole video, the context was if they don't fix um, one one or two, three things, they will actually not win. But if they fix it, then PF then will win. PF will win. So they, they, they took, took that, that part and went oh. running with it. So why didn't you come out and, and say that it's someone died? It's you, you know, people who are... <clears throat> um, you know, people actually get to a point where they... Um, what's the word? Nobody cares about the they truth. Did, the lie is more entertaining. They disagree with you no matter what. They have already resolved to disagree with you. Mm. I did actually come out, yeah? I did a whole live broadcast and people were like, ah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody you know? cares about the truth on the yeah, They don't care about the truth yeah, because true. their narrative is, is, is off. So that whole thing went round and it was crazy. But what do you think about the next elections though? <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> but it doesn't come to you in the spirit yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are waiting for an update. <laughs> I, are you good? I still got to answer my question about what you see in his life. Yeah, I'm interested. Do you think he's gonna call, grow taller? <laughs> that's, that's funny. No, like in his spiritual life, him, is I'll it? tell him after the po- after the what podcast. you're seeing in his life. Yeah, I'll tell him after the podcast. Is it good or is it bad? <laughs> the, the good and bad and the bad. Please pray for us as we close this episode. Oh, wait, before before you do that, uh, we're, we're not leaving, are we? No, we are. It's only a minute forty two. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a book that I read. Uh, called "Delivered from." The Power of Darkness mm-hmm. by Manuel Eni. Yes. Have you read that? I've read the whole book. Me too. Yeah. This sort of ties into when I asked you if you can see a real prophet to a fake one. Yeah. Is he <coughs> can see a Christian to a non Christian. And the way, do you remember that part, right? Or no? That guy was too deep, man. He was yeah. deep in Satanism. So, 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 do you know about the book? No. Before I get into I it. Never, so, so this guy basically was a Satanist. He was okay. this, like, like he would meet it. with the devil. He was at that, that level. He was at that yeah. level where he would really? go into the Indian Ocean and, and meet. meet with the devil. Yeah. So he he spoke about how he got initiated into Satanism, mm. uh, his experience with it, and how it is almost impossible to get out of it and leave to tell it. But he did. Mm. So he speaks about his experiences when <laughs> there was a guy who moved from city to city, country to country, preaching. And wherever he went to preach, people would actually... Uh, get saved. Mm-hmm. And so he had a mission to kill that person. Mm-hmm. And he said, all I needed to do was touch him and he would die. And yeah. he he mentions a part where, I'm sure you remember the book, where the guy was on a bus, that the pastor was on a bus. Mm. He blew the tire on that bus and the bus flipped, hit a tree, almost out of 90 people, almost like 80 people died except him. 
And he said the way that he could see a true Christian to a non-Christian is the per- he would not see the person the he would see a very bright light yeah. mm. Mm. where he cannot get close. He said all mm. I needed to do was just touch the guy and the guy would die. Mm. But I couldn't get close to him. Mm. Because the light would literally just burn him, mm-hmm. and he speaks about man, this is such an amazing book. Like he would, he could get into church. He's a Satanist, mm. but he could sit into church, and he would look at people around. He would know, and then mm. he could then tell that out of this congregation, God, for example, is getting affected by the word, or he's listening, or whatever is being preached is. He's actually affecting, it, mm. right? Impacting him. Impacting him. He would approach him after church, and offer him a gift. It could be an apple. It could be a banana. It could be anything. The minute that person accepts that, they forget everything they've heard. Mm. You remember he said you they'll make babies cry. Yeah, to distract people in the to church. To distract people from church. The mm. minute you see the baby this and yeah. not listen to the to to the word, he's one. Mm. And another thing that I also said, I don't know what the significant was, is they would send women that are chewing gum. So again, the minute that you notice she's, she's almost best thing I, I noticed that. The minute <laughs> you notice the um, the chewing you distract you are distracted. Yeah. Really? The rest you need to find this book. Is it? Man. Yeah. I think it's a pastor now in Nigeria. Okay. Emmanuel Eni. Yeah. Okay. There's a quite popular book in the 90s, yeah. Here's the scariest part. When he was new into Satanism because there's levels to it. He says apparently he got he got like into the Indian Ocean and they were like sitting in a circle. I'm sure you remember this. Yeah. And there was a Bible that was wrapped up in a chain that was in a corner. And in the meeting, they kept saying that one, that one, that one. And he was confused, mm. right? Because it was like, I'm late to the party. Who are they talking about? So he then asked them, are you oh, talking about, about where he mentions Jesus' name? Yes. And the devil falls. And then everybody falls. Yeah. Yo. He says, Who are you talking about when you're saying that one? Are you saying Jesus? And everybody everyone fell, fell off yeah. their stools. Mm. And he was once telling me that this is the first and the last time that you say that name. Mm. When you're referring to him, you say that one. That one. Mm. Really deep book, man. You've never heard that book. Look for it. Delivered from the powers of darkness by Emmanuel Eni. Find that book. Really interesting book. And he says about how much power, how much money he had. You remember that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and how, and, how and he had to water a, a, a plant. You when he was delivered, how things just started falling out of his stomach and exactly. bones and exactly. Well, hair was coming out of his belly and whatever. Look at <laughs> it's a it's a really dark and interesting book. Yeah. If you can just just and there were creatures, further. humans with the head of a chicken. Yeah. Cats with the head Do of you a. Remember how he was initiated when they bought a baby <coughs> on a tray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need to. I need to read through that book yeah. again. Mm. My mom still has copies. It was okay. for in our home. We're it was reading. You yeah. couldn't avoid. My mom made sure I, I read I that book. I see you looking for it. Did you find it? Uh, yeah, on YouTube. There's, there's an audio book as well, so mm. you can listen to it. Okay. Yeah. Please. That's so what was the question you wanted. Uh, there was a question you had just before you said that. That's related to. This. Yeah, no, no, that was that was just basically okay. uh, sorry, like tied I- into what I had said initially. That are you able to see the difference between either a Christian or a prophet to somebody who's fake? So he said something about light. You know, um, your rank in the spirit is determined by the intensity of light. How when, how, how bright am how I glowing bright? right now? Yes. How I'm bright? Am is I there any lights to speak of with you? Of course there is. <laughs> the hell are you talking about? <laughs> You don't see how you can't look at me? I'm blinding this man. <laughs> so is is there's that intensity, the intensity of light. So yeah. Do you see any in this room? Hmm. Besides me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to laugh so loud? What's wrong with you? There is no light going for me. Relax. Can <laughs> <laughs> you cut the microphone? You've got enough talking today. Okay, I have a question. It's a, a spark. Of, like a friend of mine has a question. <laughs> he says, how do you deal with the problem of evil, suffering and injustice in the world, especially if you believe in an omnipotent, omniscient and benevolent God? God created a world without evil. Okay. Okay. And remember, I think, I hope it's not a, it's not going to be a Bible lesson. But anyway, you know the fall of man. Adam sinned. Sin. And evil came into the world, and here we are now. Okay, so now, isn't evil allowed by God? Like, isn't he the one that allows some of these things to happen? 
So how do you reconcile that, especially mm-hmm. when innocence, like children, suffer without mm-hmm. without anyone doing anything, like without them deserving it? Mm-hmm. Like how do you reconcile that? Like let's say for, seriously though, <clears throat> somehow I wanted to get back to religion. Yeah. And this is my dying question. Mm-hmm. Why do children suffer like that? Why does God allow the most innocent of innocent to suffer? Like what, what's, the, what's the satisfactory response? Not even justified. Like what's mm-hmm. the satisfactory response to that? Like I said, you know, God created a world, a perfect world with no evil until, of course, we man sinned. sinned. Mm-hmm. If you go back to the book of Genesis, God literally wheels over the earth to man, says have dominion. Yeah. So you have dominion, you control this area, and this is your duty. Every problem that we see here, majority of the problems we see on earth are as a result of man's fall from that time disease, all these things you see, they came in. I agree with that. Yeah. Like, obviously... So I you can't blame God for that? I, 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 yeah, but it's probably his fault, isn't it? How? Oh. If he's the one that makes sure... In fact, if the devil has asked for permission before all these things happen, why can't he say children must not be touched? Like, let them, let them get their chance to make the choices. Free will, Tassiana. <sighs> That's not free will. And also, uh, I've, I've listened to messages that explain what you're asking about, and they take mm-hmm. two to three hours explaining the power that, you know, the it's devil a, has a on the physical, the yeah. on, on this earth. You know what I mean? So there's no omnificient or only, um, there's no benevolent God. That's what you're no, saying. No, he, he, he is there, but there's more to explain than... If he can explain it right have now, we'll have to give him an hour process. to explain have it. Have you ever heard of that theory that if you can't simplify something, then you don't know what it is? You That's God. Explain, you can't you explain, can explain God. Explain evolution. I don't need to explain a fact. Like, I don't need to explain that. <sighs> but this, this is, is not a about full circle. circle. Fact. We're That's what I'm saying. It will be. No. Uh, prophet, please give can us a closing prayer it? before we... Of course I can. Explain it to me, please. Do you want me to explain... The Big Bang? Yeah, no, you said you can simplify it. Can you do it? How from minutes? sand a human came? Simplified version? Yes. Mm-hmm. We evolved from a common ancestors. Our cousins are our orangutans. And there is enough evidence to prove that we evolved And wh- where did they come from? What do you mean where did they come from? Exactly that. As in what is the beginning of life? Yes. Where did the orangutans come from? The name of the species. And what's happening to the ones that are there now? How are they What evolving? did they evolve from? The name of the species? Yeah. We... Guys, yeah, so we're going back to the beginning of this episode. <laughs> Prophets, <gonna> please. <sighs> so you want a prayer? Yeah, a yeah. prayer to close and uh, to uh, rig because we've been nominated for two uh, awards. So we need. You should idea. also give a what, prophecy what, what on who's gonna win. Yeah, the who's... rugby match. Oh, that's already that's already been said. He's already no, prophesied. Yeah, already no, prophesied no, we are not that. the prophet. Don't disrespect my no, prophecy. No, no. <laughs> right, I don't disrespect it. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, let's go. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time sharing ideas. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that um, every individual that is gathered in this place will get to have an encounter with you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that even as this podcast comes to an end, I pray that this platform we will begin to rise to higher levels of influence in the name of Jesus, even as they continue doing us what they're doing. I pray that you will give them an ability and strength. Hmm. I pray that you will give them the strength and the ability to go on and Complete their assignment, the assignment that they have here on earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Well, what happened? <laughs> My main worry is you. He's, you didn't maybe, burst maybe, into flames. Maybe he saw a prophecy. What, what, what happened? I saw something. In who? In her? <laughs> in who? In this her. one. I need your number. <laughs> <laughs> 
Aus viel aus Feeling it here. Ja, aber das Feeling is there. I, I brought her here for a reason. For what? For what reason? Deliverance. Gong, gong, gong. Nah. <laughs> to the next episode, remember to click on the subscribe button and also... Um, God, I'm going to give you the awards. Um, <coughs> how many things have we been nominated in? So Zico, 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 Zico Mo Awards, and Trace, Trace Urban, the uh, Keep Walking Africa Awards. We've been nominated in South Africa for that one as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Zico Mo Awards. Oh, and I've, I've also been nominated. Best Broadcast of the Year, Man of the Year Awards, whichever. But God will have them on the screen. So please uh, subscribe to the channel and also vote for us. Till the next episode, have a lovely day. Tan 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 tan